All right, so the last part of the paper then is writing the conclusion of the paper. Now all three of these videos along with this PowerPoint will be available on Blackboard. So if you said, I know she talked about this, but I can't remember exactly what she said, you can go grab the video about the section you don't remember and you can look at, you can listen to it again, okay? All right, the conclusion. You already know how to write a conclusion. Number one, there are no quotes from the story in the conclusion. The first sentence should restate the thesis. I didn't say repeat the thesis, I said restate it. So you're gonna say something about rules and rituals and whatever the human quality that your theme is. You're gonna write it in a different way, but that's gonna be your first sentence. Um, this should be right about the types of rules and rituals found in the story. We saw rituals that involved keeping people moving forward in their life by, for example, giving them a job, giving them a bike, telling them when they can wear buttons, when they can have children, okay? Think about the end of the story. Why did the author leave the audience hanging at the end to draw your own conclusion? She did not tell you what happened to Jonas and Gabriel at the end. Do not think, do not put in your paper. Well, because there's two more books, that's why she didn't tell you. She didn't write the two books until people pressured her to do so. So you have to assume this book is a standalone. So why does the author leave you to draw your own conclusions? Where do you think the story goes from here? Because I can tell you right now, if you go ahead and read Gathering Blue and The Messenger, you can get a sense of what happened, but she doesn't come out and tell you. So it's not a trilogy like you think of a trilogy where the next book starts right where the last one left off. It's not like that at all, okay? So in the conclusion, you're gonna answer those questions. The last question that I just shared with you is the so what. We know that conclusions have to answer the so what question. When I get done reading your analysis, I, before I read your conclusion, I'm gonna say, so what? You just told me all this stuff, big deal. Make sure that's in your conclusion. A well-crafted composition helps the reader understand the relationship between ideas. Gives the reader food for thought. In other words, I want to be thinking about what you said when I'm finished, after I've finished reading your paper. I want you to make me think. And it doesn't make the task of understanding your ideas so difficult that it becomes a challenge to read. So it has to be clear. When we're all done, you're going to submit your draft for feedback from me. Do me a favor. If you get your first draft written by Friday night, submit it and I'll look at it so I can start looking at them and, look, and giving feedback. Don't wait till Monday to turn it in. You will not have any class time Monday to work on it anyway. Okay? Does the introduction avoid openings like in this story? Is the organization effective? It should not dwindle, it should build. Do quotations provide evidence that prove your opinions and ideas? Is the essay devoted to analysis and not summary? Do not summarize the plot. Do not write in first person. Do not use contractions. Do not use pronouns unless it is in the same sentence as the noun it names. Always look for the strongest word choice to convey your ideas. Never begin sentences with the same words. We will work on all of this in revision, but try to do it when you write initially. When you check your, your work before you submit your rough draft, you are required to read your essay out loud. I can always tell essays that were read out loud and submitted and essays that were just turned in and people never read their writing. How can I tell? How do you think I can tell? Lots of mistakes that are easily caught if you read them out loud. Because if I read your essay and then I read it out loud and you've got two words switched around or a word is missing a letter or there's no and in the sentence, you and I both know that if you read it out loud you would have caught that. I can always tell. Fix any awkward, run-on, incomplete, or redundant sentences. Redundant are ideas that say the same thing over and over again. Because you can't think of anything new, so you just rewrite it in a different way. 
If you don't use spell check, if I get your paper pulled up and there's a whole bunch of misspelled words, I'm going to send it back to you and not even give you feedback. You're going to get a zero. Make sure you have your source cited at the bottom. Don't worry about that until next week and I will show you how to do it. We'll do it all together at the same time, okay? And I'll show you the website that we can use to do it. Then we're going to turn it in. We're going to turn it into safe assign. So you know the reason we turn it into safe assign.